In this video, we're going to give an overview and simple explanation of the recycler view in Android. There isn't any coding in this video, but there is in a video that follows this where I do an example in Kotlin. So first of all, why the recycler view? It's an efficient way to show a list or a collection of data in the Android application because it only creates enough view components that the user will see at any one time. And as the user scrolls through the list, it uses the same view components to show data that's further down on the list that the user is scrolling through. So an efficient use of UI. Essentially, it is recycling these UI components, which is why it's called a recycler view. Here's the example application from the hands-on coding video that I have later. What you see here is a collection of plants, not very pretty because I wasn't really worried about the look and feel, but you notice that I can scroll through these plants. And while there are several actually plant specimens here, there are only as many view components as one can see on the screen at one time. For example, here we have five images and five texts that represent the plants. So a total of five image views and five text views, plus a couple on either side as we scroll. So let's say maybe about seven or eight are actually created. As I scroll through the list, we can see that I have new items coming up but it's still the same seven or eight different components that are showing these items. It's simply recycling the ones that are no longer visible and reusing them to make other specimens visible. So easiest to show with an animation. The recycler view as a layout is this collection of repeating layouts that have a similar look and feel. In other words, an image and, the, and then some text. So you see the same pattern repeated here four different times. The adapter is something that takes a list or a collection of Java objects and makes them visible in this recycler view. Let's watch how it happens. First of all, the adapter is going to create something called a view holder. The job of the view holder is to take an individual element from this collection and show it in a recycler view layout. So we grab one of these layout nuggets, which we're just going to call a row layout to make it easier. Now the adapter is going to talk to the list because the adapter has a, has a relationship with this list or collection. It's going to grab an item at a certain position, pass it over to the view holder. The view holder takes this and it gets data out of this object and it represents that data in this individual row layout which is part of the larger recycler view. In this case, it's done it for the first item in the list. What it would do next is take this entire unit, put it back on the recycler view, then move to the next row layout and associate the next item in the list with that next row layout. And again, do it for the next, do it for the next, so on and so on, so on and so forth. Uh, as the user scrolling, it's going to continue to do this. So the important terms to remember here are the recycler view, the individual row layout, the adapter, the view holder, and some collection of objects that we want to represent. So this, if you want to maybe pause and take a look at this slide, this essentially explains what I just did. The recycler view is a container for the UI, uh, a container that goes into an existing layout. Maybe it's a new screen or maybe it's an existing screen where we're simply adding a recycler view alongside other components. Then we have the individual layout. The individual layout is repeated for each row of data in the recycler view. The adapter manages the collection of raw data that we want to show and the view holder, where the view holder takes an individual item from the collection and populates the components on the individual row layout with the data from each of these objects. And then of course we have some collection of data or objects that we want to show in a recycler view. So a couple things we're going to need to do. First of all, for a recycler view, we're going to need to go to our build gradle and add a new dependency. I copied one here from a project that I'm working on, uh, but careful on the version. The version that you use might be slightly different depending on when you're watching this video. Uh, the versions tend to change somewhat frequently. So I recommend uh, go out and find one that matches your project compile SDK uh, version or just your project's Android version. Make sure that it's compatible with the other libraries. The layout, so we have a containing layout which is maybe an existing screen or maybe a new screen where we add this android.support v7 widget recycler view and that essentially is part of our layout. 
Now inside of this we need that repeating layout or the row layout. So we'll make a separate, usually fairly small layout that just represents one single row. In the animation, it was this guy right here. So recycler view is the collection of all. Row layout is a repeating layout that represents one item from our list at a time. Okay. In the onCreate method, or another method, depending on how you want to create this recycler view in your app, uh, there are a few things that you need to do. First of all, uh, get access to the little row layout that we created. I called it a linear layout here, but it really could be anything. We'll just call it a row layout. Uh, invoke has fixed size on our recycler view layout. Uh, that basically says, you know, it tells it not to move around. Uh, set the layout manager on our recycler view. Uh, I used a linear layout manager in my case. Set something called an item a a animator. And then finally, tell the recycler view which adapter is going to it, which adapter it's going to work with. So little bullet point of items. This I'll say is a little bit easier to see in the hands-on example that follows this video. So just an overview, but some things we'll see in that hands-on example. Now the adapter, what's the role of the adapter? To manage the collection and the UI operations for that collection. So the adapter knows about the entire collection of objects that we want to show. Uh, it gets a layout that represents the current row and passes it to the view holder so that the view holder can take an individual item from the collection and use it to populate our individual row layout. The adapter is also going to create views for items and pass those to the view holder. And because the adapter knows about the entire collection, it's going to provide a count of all the items in the collection. Adapter methods that we want to that we want to kind of be aware of. Notify says, okay, I want to rebind this collection to the adapter. The collection is just a collection of usually plain old Java objects or DTOs. And then also notify data set changed. I kind of like this one. If you change the collection under the covers, you can invoke this one on the adapter and say, hey, the collection has changed. I would like you to update the view with the new collection. Now, the, while the adapter is associating, or it has an association with the entire collection of objects, and it knows what the layout is, the view holder only knows about one object at a time. Uh, that's an important concept. It's operating on every single row, but one object at a time and one row at a time. So the view holder is going to extend something called recycler view view holder. And it, its job is to take that individual row layout and grab the UI components off of that row layout and then populate the components with an individual item from the collection of all of the POJOs. And this individual item was passed to the view holder from the adapter. Because it's so memory efficient, the recycler view is a good idea to use, but I found it can be a little bit tricky to keep these terms separate uh, when you hear adapter view holder, collection, recycler view. So that's where I kind of like uh, animation like this. You can remember what the role of each item here is because they all play an important role. So with that, let's take a look at the hands-on example in our next video. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.